Can you overcome your differences with others to work well together in your parish or community? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. The year was 1770, and in a small Italian church, two altar boys prepared for benediction. Anibali de la Genga and Francesco Castiglioni entered the sacristy, put on their obs, and grabbed the heavy brass candlesticks, and then they began to bicker, arguing over who would stand on the priest's right for the procession, their quibble escalated into a shouting match. Alarmed parishioners turned their heads to the back of the church to see the commotion, and that's when it happened. Castiglioni cracked De La Genga over the head with his candlestick. Blood dripped out of De La Genga's head, and both boys began shoving each other. Shocked parishioners screamed, throw them out, throw them out. So the embarrassed priest grabbed the boys, led them to the door, and tossed them out of the church. Now fast forward several decades to 1825, half a million people gathered in Rome for the great Jubilee celebration. The Jubilee occurred every 25 years and its grand climax was the opening of the Holy Door at St. Peter's Basilica. Traditionally, the Pope would knock on the door three times with a large silver hammer and sing, Open unto me the gates of justice. On the third knock, the door would swing open and the Pope would lead his people through. The symbolism was rich. Pilgrims from all over the world coming back home to the church, following their leader through the great Porta Fidei, the door of faith. So this jubilee year, in front of thousands of pilgrims, Cardinal de la Genga made his way to the door. It was 55 years after the candlestick incident. Only he was no longer Cardinal de la Genga. He was Pope Leo XII. And as he neared the door, he turned to the cardinal beside him, Cardinal Castiglioni, and said, Let me have the hammer. With a sly grin, Castiglioni replied, Just like I gave you the candlestick? Amazingly, four years later, Castiglioni succeeded his friend and became Pope himself, taking the name Pius VIII. Now, if you told any of those few sitters back in 1770 that they had two future popes in the back of their church, they'd laugh you out of the building. Those two boys, the ones shoving and whacking each other with candles? You've got to be kidding me. Today is the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. They are arguably the two greatest apostles of Christ. Peter was the first pope and the rock on which Jesus built his church. Paul wrote most of the New Testament with 13 attributed to him, though most scholars agree only seven are directly written by him. They came from different backgrounds. Peter was a fisherman, while Paul was a man of great learning from the university city of Tarsus. Jesus called Peter on the shores of Galilee while the latter was working, while Paul was working to persecute Christians and was in Damascus when he was called. They both became saints. But at some point during their mission work, they quarreled a lot. Peter was in charge of winning the Jews to Christ's church while Paul was assigned to evangelize the Gentiles or pagans. The biggest disagreement was the circumcision of the Gentiles, which Paul opposed and Peter supported. They had public confrontations, and because of this, Paul did not even put Peter in his list of beloved brothers he greeted at the end of his letter to the Romans, even if Peter was the head of the church. Even Peter, in his writings, only mentioned Paul once in 2 Peter, Yet in 1 Corinthians, it is possible that they were able to mend their relationship as Paul gave respect and recognition of Peter's authority as the supreme head, while Peter gave due recognition for Paul's letters, referring to them as scriptures. We reflect today on our relationship with our co-workers in the vineyard of Christ. Jesus works through us in our own distinctiveness. We all contribute in different ways to build the kingdom of God here on earth as we prepare ourselves and others for His heavenly kingdom, we must see through our differences and ask the Lord for the grace to be able to maintain the peace and unity within our community or parish through us. For if we are to attain holiness and receive our rightful place in heaven, we must overcome our personal weaknesses, look for the good in others, 
and build on those positive qualities so that we can truly see Christ in them. One thing though in common between Peter and Paul was they suffered as they went on mission. The first reading shows Peter's imprisonment in the hands of King Herod Agrippa, and in the second reading, Paul writes from his prison to Timothy, expecting the end of his life. They both died a violent death, Peter by crucifixion and Paul by beheading. We too must constantly die to ourselves, rid ourselves of the pride to work with others, and give respect to the wishes of our Lord for the mission of evangelization we are called out to accomplish and the holiness we are called to attain. Only then can we light a candle in homage to the Lord in recognition of His grace that has built our church and our faith through the unity in diversity shown by Saints Peter and Paul. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, use me and my co-workers in your church, recognizing each other's uniqueness, and grant us the grace to work in unity and in love for you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.